So with all the media blitz crap about Wi-Fi 7, well, Unify did come out with their Wi-Fi 7. They're calling it the U7 Pro. Not sure exactly why, but I'll explain why I want to say that. But if you got to have the latest tech and you have some Wi-Fi 7 devices and you're rocking Wi-Fi 5 or 6 or whatever, probably going to be for you. But yeah, there are a couple little drawbacks. Now, if you just want to skip through all the little geeky testing and everything, you'll find the chapters down below and you can just jump to the conclusion or but at least hang out for that first speed test. It's pretty damn impressive. Definitely max out the full bandwidth on the download there and we'll see what we get on upload. And almost maxing out upload. That's pretty damn impressive. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet speeds over freaking Wi-Fi. I love it. And no, this is not a sponsored video by Unify. I did buy this with my own funds. No affiliate link to their store or whatever. So it's totally going to be an unbiased review. And if you're wondering, well, what the hell are even Unify access points and you've been living in a cave? Um, basically, think of it as like many little cell phone towers for Wi-Fi that you put all around your house. And, you know, whether you have like a big massive like six, seven thousand square foot house and then you can have Wi-Fi every single corner, outside, etc. with a fresh new signal that you wire to the access point itself and it creates a great Wi-Fi experience. You can walk around just like you say would drive around with a cell phone and you get handed off from tower to tower. Basically the same deal. It's not like the old days of just having one little Wi-Fi router in your home and then the very other side doesn't have great signal and it kind of sucks. And then, yeah, this isn't repeaters or mesh or anything. You can do that with these, but this is, I would suggest do the wired to them. It creates a good signal, fresh signal out of Ethernet, and it's pretty awesome experience. And no, you don't need to use their switches. You don't even need to use their router. I use OpenSense. So size-wise, this is the U7. I'm probably going to get them mixed up. This is the u 6 Enterprise, great access point, but it is damn pricey. This is the U6 LR MediaTek crap. Yeah, don't buy this. Um, I don't know if somebody wants to buy this off of me, uh, shoot me a comment down below. I don't think I need this anymore. Um, the size of the, you know, these are pretty much the same exact size. There you can see this is the Enterprise again in the U6 LR. Um, those are going to be the same size. Looks like probably the same exact size. So how does the U7 Pro stack up against the Enterprise? Maybe half an inch difference on, the, on all the sides. Um, height wise, probably about the same, fairly close. Now, of course, for reference, the old school workhorse that brought me to the Unify game way back in the day, probably before all of the uh, M2 locos I used to put around. But when it got into the access point game, the ACLR, this guy was pretty small compared to any of the others. So yeah, you're gonna upgrade to some larger flying saucers. Now, the one cool thing I did like is if you have the U6 LR or I'm sure the U6 Pro, they all they kept the same exact mounting brackets. So when I got my U7 in, I just didn't even open the little mounting bracket that we used there. It's the same exact mounting bracket for all of those access points. So it was pretty neat being able to swap around things. Now, one thing that is going to be different coming to the U7, if you were like on the AC Pro or whatever, is this is going to be 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Now, I haven't tried to use gigabit on it. Um, I'm sure it would work. It just would work at slower speeds, but it was nice, you know, especially on the U6 Enterprise as well as this one. It is, you know, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, but going down that rabbit hole, when you start to chase that 2.5 gigabit PoE switches, this is PoE Plus, um, it starts to get a little expensive. So uh, be prepared to chase that, you know, bandwidth wagon there.
So let's jump into some of the speed test. And yeah, I got to put all my access points back up before the family beats the hell out of me. So I did swap out the Wi-Fi card in this old laptop. I think it's like an i7 8th gen. And I know it's like four or five years old, but the cool part is you can just swap out the Wi-Fi card to Wi-Fi 7 for like 40 bucks. And of course, I'll leave the link down below to the one I use. It is Intel based. Now using iPerf, it's just a command prompt that got off the web. It seems to work pretty well. I have it going to a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet server. And we are currently on 160 megahertz channel. So we're probably getting, looks like we're getting that 1.6 gig a second. That's pretty damn decent. So I wanted to stop this and we'll go to Libra Speed running on the same server and we'll see what speeds we get. Basically like a local speed test. So we're getting two gig, well, it's like it slowed down a little bit. We are in the same room, just probably maybe 12 to 15 feet away from the access point. One thing I really was impressed with is the upload speeds of Wi-Fi 7. This is on 160 megahertz on six gigahertz. So probably not a whole lot of traffic. And um, let's check out the one on the phone. So this is a Pixel 8 Pro, comes with Wi-Fi 7, has all the things, and we're showing a handshake rate of 1800 megabits um, at, of course, this 160 megahertz. So looks like we're getting 16, 15, 1.5 gig, and upload, is 1.2 a little bit slower we are sitting right next to the laptop so we moved over we got one wall in between and probably a tv in the way between the access point and the laptop here so let's see we're still on wi-fi 7 on 6 gigahertz 160 megahertz wide so 1.7 one room away from the download and about a gig upload. So a little bit slower, nothing crazy. Pretty impressive for being, be honest, one room away. Let's see what we get on the Libra speed. So about a gig download. Definitely can tell the antennas on a cell phone are not as good as a laptop for doing Wi-Fi. So we got three walls in between. We're in OG's room and um, we're all the way across the house. So this should really make an impact. So we're only getting like 400 megabit out of the full 160 megahertz channel on Wi-Fi 7 on six gigahertz. Um, really gonna take an impact but I'm surprised it does get half a gig. Well, I'm getting a little bit more on the Libra speed. I'm getting 1.2 and we're getting 500 on the upload. Are we still on? Yep, we're still on six gigahertz, channel 37. Um, not too bad. I'm kind of impressed with the performance. Let's see what we get on the Libra speed. So we're getting like 500. I really thought I would struggle to even pull 200 to 300 this far away from the access point. That's pretty decent for six gigahertz, I would say. So now we changed to a 320 megahertz channel and we definitely hit the limit on the 2.5 gigabit ethernet. I think typically on this server, when I run iPerf using just ethernet, I get 2.4, 2.37 gigabit. So that's pretty damn impressive over Wi-Fi. 320 megahertz, six gigahertz. Definitely max out the full bandwidth on the download there. And we'll see what we get on upload. And almost maxing out upload. That's pretty damn impressive. 2.5 gigabit ethernet speeds over freaking Wi-Fi. I love it. We should be able to max out our ISP as well, since that's just 1.2. Yep. 
I could pay for the two, could pay for the five, but um, really don't need it, and it would uh, rip a new hole in my damn wallet to pay for the two gig fiber. Definitely hits things like it's supposed to. We're getting almost at 1.2 on the upload. That's about normal what I get on Wired. So we're in OG's room. You can see his Mario grass on the wall. But um, let's see what we got on iPerf. Actually getting slower speeds with the wider channel on the Libra speed. This is local. So we're getting 1.2, 1 1.3. Definitely different with iPerf. Um, based on Libra speed. I guess that's why we do both. So 1.3 versus 500. Like I say, there's one, two, three, there's three walls in between this laptop and the access point and going across the two rooms. So that leads me down to, should you buy one? It depends on where you're at right now. What do you have in your current home? Do you have a bunch of crap media techs, you know, Wi-Fi access points? Yeah, you know the ones, the nanos, those are pieces of junk, along with some other ones out there. And you want to upgrade to get the six gigahertz band? Probably not a bad idea. Because um, really you'll have to look at, you're looking at the U7 Pro is 189. If it's in stock versus if you're just trying to pick up six gigahertz, this U6 Enterprise is 279. It's a little bit pricey. It doesn't really make sense, to be honest with you at this point, unless you're needing to pick up those additional spectrum streams of like 4x4, because at 159 versus 189, I mean, really we're talking 30 bucks an access point. Um, and typically someone needs two or three in a home at most, unless you've got some of them big ballers out there. Um, this is the U6 Pro, great access point for, you know, Wi-Fi 6, that's not six gigahertz. So of course you can see it's just listed here and it does have 2X2, 2.4 and 4X4 versus the U7, which is 2X2, 2X2, 2X2 across the board. Now the enterprise, you're paying more, it's 2X2, 4X4 and 4X4, but no Wi-Fi 7. So, I would probably, if you're wanting to itch into upgrade, then I would probably pick up some. You know, go in and go set the um, notify you thing on stock. Hopefully they have more stock of the U7 Pros. The only issue I have had so far now, of course the firmware is fresh new firmware, is I had an issue with Tasmoda device groups. Now, now everyone probably, well it is Tamat, Tasmoda, Tomato, yeah. The device groups uses UDP and I couldn't get several of them to work, but with the 7037 firmware, I haven't had any issues with that. So that's stabilized and I'm sure the firmware is gonna get better. So hopefully by the time they get in stock, the firmware releases will be even better as more and more people test things and they hash stuff out. So definitely keep an eye out for stock. If you're looking to upgrade, it's not a bad access point, but I am curious what's next down the road do we have a u7 ultra plus pro or some crap like that that's actually 4x4 on 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz but will it need to be poe plus plus to support all that power who's to say will it even be maybe they'll need more than 2.5 gigabit ethernet on it so um but maybe that was going to be like a $350 damn access point. I shouldn't give them any ideas. So that's pretty much going to do it for this one. I appreciate you watching. Thanks to all the YouTube members, Patreon members. Definitely couldn't do it without you, especially on things like this. And yep, y'all know all the drill. Press all them buttons down there and y'all take care.